Hello and welcome everyone, this is Mr. Umath again. Today we want to have a look at the Riemann Xi function. The Xi function is a very special function that was introduced by Riemann, as the name um, shows you its Riemann Xi function, uh, while working on the zeta function itself. And the most important part is that the Xi function just follows this functional equation of Xi of 1 over 2 plus it equals psi of 1 half minus it. Okay, now actually at this moment your eyes and your ears should be very very focused on this topic because you now see this magically appearing 1 half plus some complex part. And here again 1 half minus it and this is called the critical line uh, in this spot all the interesting parts of the zeta function are happening and actually the xi function is nothing else but a modified zeta function and you will see soon. Now how can we derive this? Um, we just have to look up the stuff that we did before for deriving the Riemann functional equation. We use this kind of representation pi to the minus s halves gamma s halves zeta of s is equal to this integral 1 to infinity x to the s half plus x to the 1 minus uh, s over 2 then psi x over x dx minus 1 over s 1 minus s. Okay, this should sound familiar actually you, you don't have to know this by heart but actually it should somehow remind you of this proof actually if you plug in 1 minus s you should see that both this side doesn't change so uh, you actually prove by that if you if you know that then you can easily prove the Riemann functional equation now what did Riemann do he just introduced some few steps okay first of all he multiplied, first of all, he took this minus into there and changed their order, so s minus 1, but here a plus, and he multiplied this whole expression with 1 half s, then this brackets s minus 1. This left-hand side doesn't change by multiplying with 1 half s over, and not over, but multiplied with s minus 1. And the right-hand side, we this guy here in the back will become plus 1 half. Remember, we changed the s and uh, 1 um, in order to reduce this to a plus, so this plus. And we multiplied with 1 half s, s minus 1. So these guys did cancel, and we only are left with 1 half. And 1 half s, s minus 1 is left in here. Okay, now what Riemann said was, okay, if I look at this equation, I will define this guy, this very strange looking guy, which is uh, 1 half s, s minus 1, pi minus s half, gamma s half, zeta of s. He defined this as the xi function. Now, it's very easy to see that this xi function actually holds this functional equation which is a pretty easy one so zeta of a, uh, not zeta sorry but xi of x s <laughs> sorry xi and gammas and zetas uh, sometimes you mix them up so it's xi of s is equal to xi of 1 minus s you can easily show this by plugging in 1 minus s in here and you see this will become 1 minus s this will become s and so forth you can do this all the way around and you will see uh, you are getting the same stuff out of this nothing really changes okay now um, if we go ahead and now try to look at the symmetry of this function what Riemann did was again he substituted here um, another value of 1 s equals 1 half plus it. Why, uh, why here introducing a t which is complex? 
um, this is a very interesting part because now if you have a look at this it seems like the real part is one half plus IT so T should be real but uh, actually we want to have every kind of complex value so uh, Riemann allow T to be complex if we plug this into this uh, the, the previous uh, kind of functional equation of the xi function which was xi of s is equal to xi of 1 minus s you will get this following stuff okay you get 1 half plus i t equals zeta 1 half minus i t and now the stuff gets even more interesting so you should know one half should make it somehow sound in your ears and you see somehow here an IT while in the general case this T should be equal to to some complex number but if you want to observe the zeros of the zeta function which are actually the same almost the same as for the Xi function then you will see that all these values of t are real okay there is no complex value for this actually uh, this is the Riemann hypothesis so I don't know if it's true or not but it seems to be true but many mathematicians still say okay it's not true anyway <laughs> so um, the the idea is if you want to find all the zeros of the zeta function you can go ahead and find the zeros of the xi function and they seem to lie on a, a critical line which has the real value of one half and all the zeros seem to lie on this all non-trivial zeros now what is the Riemann hypothesis so the Riemann hypothesis uh, says that all non-trivial zeros are lying on this on this critical line so actually what one should do is uh, or actually how you could uh, go ahead and say that Riemann was not right if you could find a zero a non-trivial zero with a real part that is not equal to one half okay so this is the Riemann hypothesis maybe I will go in more details and introducing um, further stuff and actually the prime estimation function and so forth but first of all uh, the next thing that we want to have a look at is finding the zeros of the zeta function and actually I don't know when this video will be uploaded if I have time I will do it as fast as I can but um, you never know when you have time okay so you guys like always if you have some comments um, some uh, questions please feel free to ask or use the comment uh, function of YouTube if you like my videos please give thumbs up and um, actually that's it I hope you guys had fun watching this video I know it's it was a pretty short video but it sh should show you how the Riemann hypothesis slowly but uh, really appears in front of your eyes okay um, that's it actually guys I hope you had fun and I hope to see you next see you guys